All right, welcome back. This is part two of the GU-17 amplifier. And uh, I have not tested it since I initially built it. And it's got all the original tubes in it. And I just powered it up. Um, actually, I've been using it as my shop amp for a while now, so it's getting lots of use. It's got hundreds of hours of operation on it. But I just powered it up and checked the bias. And the the power through the output tubes, um, I think originally set was like 16 milliamps, had dropped down to about 10. And uh, so I think that perhaps these tubes, we'll see, you know, I don't know, we'll see if maybe they're a little wearing out a little bit. Um, I don't know. So we'll have to check and see, see if it's still making full power, see what the distortion looks like and all that kind of stuff. So you can see, so initially what we have here, we've got our signal generator, right? We have um, down here uh, some series resistance because the signal gen has an output impedance of like 50 ohms and that's way too low um, for sort of a, a test of what this would operate like in a system. And so we've added, I think I added like 470 there. So that gets us right into sort of the normal output impedance of a preamp or whatever. And also, yeah, they'll just, the input transformers are finicky, so if you give them a lot of very low impedance or whatever on the primary, they can cause them to ring and be weird. And if you give them too much impedance on the primary, they can do other weird things, right? So um, best to give them what they would actually get in the real world. So sort of a modern DAC or a modern pre is going to have an output impedance in the in the four, five, six hundred ohms range. And so that's what we're that's what we're adding here. So adding a little bit of series resistance there, so you can see. And we're just going right in. The other side, the other uh, channel here, I've just shorted the input. And I've just got a little resistor over here so that it's not just sitting there open. And then we're testing the other side here. So, like I said, I, ch I checked the bias. And the bias is, uh, I put it back up to 15 milliamps per side. So there are two plates in there, one cathode. And so it's going to be 30 milliamps total, but each plate's going to be getting 15. I checked the uh, the B plus. It's still right on spec at uh, 330 odd volts or something like that. And I didn't pop the bottom off yet. We'll do that later. Have a look at the inside of it. Um, but I haven't done that yet, so I haven't checked the uh, the screen. But I assume the screen is still operating just as just as it should be. Um, if you look right here closely, you'll see that we have little LEDs peeking out right there. And those LEDs are little clip indicators that we saw in the previous video. Um, they're in the screen circuit, and they should flash when we see clipping over here. Um, you can see we've got our, our multimeter set up across. So here's our load. We've got 8 ohm load right now. Um, we're on the 8 ohm tap. Uh, we're it's tapped in with our... We're tapped in here with our, uh, our scope and with our probe, our meter, right? So everything's looking good here. And so uh, we're going to be testing today for uh, several different things. We're going to be doing gain, power. Uh, we're going to be doing distortion at 1 watt, distortion at 5 watts. Actually, we're going to be, when we get out the uh, computer, we're going to be doing sweeps. We're going to look at distortion at every frequency and at every power level. Um, but just specifically, just um, for points of reference, we'll be looking at distortion at 1 watt and 5 watts. We're going to be... Uh, looking at noise versus 1 watt, and we're also going to look at hum versus 1 watt. We're going to measure the output impedance, we're going to have a look at the square wave, and we're going to have a look at the frequency response of the amp. Um, the first things we're going to do is we're going to do gain, power, output impedance, and square wave, because that is what the scope is sort of good for, right? And so, First things first, let's just make sure it's doing a thing. So we have, we're generating, we're gonna generate 1K here at one volt. Let's see. And there you go. So the amplifier is working. I did know that it was working because I've, like I said, been using it in my shop. And so let's, for the first test, let's go ahead and just see if it still makes power. So we're into, uh, we're into eight ohms here, right? So let's just uh, click this down a notch and let's just bring up our input level until we see what it does here and there it's clipping and have have a look there so it's clipping and the red clipping indicator is on you can see just as it begins to clip the LED begins to glow 
pretty cool. Oh, have a look at that though. We do have a little bit of crossover distortion in here, and that's because this is a, a fixed bias uh, AB1 amp, and uh, that's something they do. I addressed that in later amplifiers. You've probably seen some of my later videos where I um, addressed that problem, but this is an amplifier I built before I invented that little bias system that removes the blocking distortion. So we're getting a little bit of blocking, a little bit of crossover distortion there at clipping. But you can see that uh, everything looks good right up into that point. So let's see, what is our max unclipped waveform? Something like, we're gonna just, let's just call it, let's just call it 7 point, 7.6, 7.4, between 7.4 and 7.6, right? So let's get our, I should have done this earlier, but let's say, so we're gonna do 7.4 squared uh, divided by our load, right? 7.4 times 7.4 uh, equals that divided by eight equals, and so the amplifier, let me just double check with this to make sure that this says 7.6. So let's just do 7.6 instead and give ourselves the benefit of the doubt here. 7.6 times 7.6 divided by 8 equals. All right, so it's making 7.2 watts. And I said it makes 8 watts. And these, like I said, these tubes might be starting to show their age a little bit, the output tubes. But let's just go on up um, and see if we can achieve... So obviously it's it's clipping, right? It's clipping right there. But we can achieve, you know, it, it still looks, eh, it looks okay. You know, it's, it's, it's in the clipping there and the clipping indicator is on, right? But it is making eight watts. And so I think it's fair to call this, still call this an eight watt amplifier. And uh, so that, that's that, that's the power, that 1K. So it's sort of like a good sort of way to determine sort of the, the power level of the amplifier. And so now, let's go back down to one watt, because that's a better sort of place to test things like square waves. So we'll go down to about one watt here. Let's see. Try and get one watt on the nose, because for no other reason than just because. So here's one watt, looks good. And um, just for fun, we don't need to do this, right? But we'll look at, let's look at the FFT. Scroll on down. Oh, that's not what we want. Probably shouldn't do this. We're gonna look. We're gonna have a more a closer look at the distortion later. But here, so you can see uh, a little bit of second order creeping in at one watt. Probably not a lot there. We'll uh, we'll take a closer look at that uh, when we get the computer out. We'll get a very uh, we'll get a detailed look at look at all that stuff. All right. Good, good, good. Now, let's have a look at the square wave. Wow. Well, looks pretty good. Pretty good. So you can see, uh, if we zoom in here a little bit, and let's adjust this just a little bit so we can see this better. All right, so have a look at the square wave there. And you can see that uh, there's a tiny little bit of ring, but no overshoot. So it looks like I've compensated this correctly. Um, there's a little bit of a slope, which means that it's a little 8 watt tube amplifier and that it has a little bit of low frequency roll off, which I'm sure we'll see when we do all of our more detailed frequency sweeps. Um, but I'm, honestly, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a pretty good looking, that's a pretty good looking uh, 1K square wave. Behave, behaving well. All right, awesome. All right, now let's test uh, whether or not I was right when I said that it needed 1.5 volts to clip. See, we're at clipping here, and so let's see what we're putting in. We are putting in 1.4 volts, and so it's a little bit, a little bit more sensitive or more gain than I thought. It was still not much, and so let's bring this down to an unclipped waveform here, and we can see what we got. So we've got. Let's just do seven. That'll be a nice round number, right? So we'll do seven RMS, and let's see what we're putting in. Uh, we're putting in 1.2, so seven divided by 1.12, 1 right? 
7 divided by 1.12. And so our amplifier has an extremely modest gain of uh, 6.25. <laughs> uh, so not a lot. A lot of gain there. But um, that's just about right because it, we need, that's what we need. We need to, uh, we need to clip the amp. Uh, with, you know, before two volts, two volts RMS, right? Because, um, let's see what we got here. Yeah, because uh, that two volts RMS is about what a modern sort of DAC is going to provide when it's uh, all the way turned up, and so you really don't need a lot more gain than that. And so there you go. And you can see once again our little clip LED is kicking in. Um, it's a pretty, pretty cool little clip. LED there so you can see it's unclipped 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 and then turns on right there as it starts to clip man I love that I need to build more amps with little clip indicators that'd be cool all right all right we're gonna measure the output impedance with this little this little board I made right here and so you can kind of see what it does um, it's got a switch the switch uh, toggles between the pot and an arbitrarily large impedance that simulates open circuit. And so what we do is we plug this in as the load with the arbitrarily large impedance, from this, which in this case is 1K, which is arbitrarily large in comparison to the output impedance of the amplifier, which will be a few ohm, you know, six ohms or something like that. And then you set it uh, so where it's outputting, let's say, two volts, that's what we're going to do. And then you switch in the pot and you twiddle this pot, this is like a, a precision pot, 5 watt precision pot here. We're going to twiddle this pot until we get down to 1 volt, so half the voltage. So that that point, this will be exactly the same value as the output impedance of the amplifier. And then we're just going to measure. We're going to measure this little guy right here and see what the output impedance of our amp is. We can test it. Actually, let's do that. We'll test it on the, uh, the 8 ohm tap and we'll test it on the 4 ohm tap. The 4 ohm tap will be lower. Uh, so let's give it a try. Instead of our load now, we have this little impedance testing device. And right now, it's at the R is uh, producing two volts across the arbitrarily large impedance there, the 1K. And so now what we're gonna do is, uh, you can see it's exactly two volts here. It's reading two volts there too, so we're in agreement, which is always nice when your stuff agrees with itself. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna switch in the pot, which will be lower than 1K substantially lower and it's going to bring the voltage down and we're going to shoot for exactly one volt um, which will be exactly half and that is going to tell us the output impedance of the amplifier so let's do it so <laughs> it looks like I've already achieved uh, I didn't intend for that to happen I didn't do this ahead of time but let's just pretend it wasn't already exactly at the right spot here alright so at 1.2 we're just going to scroll down Scroll down, scroll down, until so we get to exactly one volt. We're going to check that we're going to be the meter. Exactly one volt on the meter. Still going down. Oh! That, that's just about as close as we're going to get. Alright, so now what we do, we'll turn this off, right? And I'm going to pull this out, and we're going we're to actually measure it and see what our resulting impedance is here. All right, so I've got this little device here. Uh, it's a cheap little tester from uh, an eBay or whatever, but actually it's surprisingly good at, at measuring very low uh, resistances. And so its lead, its lead resistance is only like point, you can see I just tested it, point zero four of an ohm. And so it really gets you close here. So let's just see what it tells us about, about our, uh, what does it say? 6.69 ohms. All right, so that's our output impedance on the 8 ohm tap. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. All right, next up, let's check the 4 ohm tap. That'll be fun to see. Let's see, we'll start our generator here. And we have gotta bring our gain up because obviously the 4 ohm tap is gonna have less gain, All right? So let's bring it on up to two. This is into the 1K resistor, which is simulating our open circuit, right? So let's just make sure we get two on the nose here. Mm -hmm. Two 
two on the nose, good. Now, let's flip in our pot here. All right, let's just scroll down until we get that exactly one volt. Oh, went too far. A little bit less. Than, oh, it's a little bit fiddly there. That's that's really really close. We'll just call that. All right, now we're gonna measure this. All right, let's see what we got here. We're going to use the uh, the red and the black, that's what we use for the other ones. Let's test. Let's see what we got. And our output impedance for the 4 ohm tap, 3.57 ohms. Pretty good. I'll write that down. 3.57. Alright, and that concludes the testing that we're going to do with the, uh, the scope. Got a lot of good testing out of the scope, but now we're gonna swap it out for the computer and the sound card and some software. Um, and that's so we can get some uh, more exact measurements about frequency response and distortion and noise. So, let me get that set up. All right, so you can see that the scope's gone, and now we have a computer and a USB interface there, sound interface. Our load is still here. Everything's cool, so our source now is the interface and our measurement device is now the interface. And so we've got REW open here, which is uh, the tool that I really like to use. It's free and it's awesome. Um, right now we're generating a 1K signal here. Uh, we're generating about one watt and um, that's it's kind of hard to get exactly one watt with that, which is why it's about one watt. It's very close to one watt. And uh, so we're going to look at the FFT to start with. So you can see that we're at 1K here. We're generating a 1K signal. And um, we've already got some measurements here and everything. We can see the noise floor. We can see some of our distortion there. Um, looks like we can see all kinds of, kinds of great information all right off the bat. Such a great tool. Anyway, um, right. So first things first, we got our fundamental here. And you'll notice that we can see our distortion already right here. Um, second order is the dominant distortion here. And it's at uh, 0.32. This is 1 watt. So uh, 0 0.32. And it's making up, <laughs> zero, it's making up uh, almost all of the total harmonic distortion. So the third is then 0 0.038, which is the next highest one. Now you'll notice, this is a push-pull amp, you'll notice that um, the second is higher than the third. Probably what that means is that my tube here is not very well matched side to sides. And I didn't attempt to uh, roll through, you could probably roll through a bunch of GU-17s and find one um, that's more well matched, because if it's more well matched in a push-pull amp, you would expect the second to be lower than the third. And so probably the distortion at one watt of this circuit could be a lot lower than this if I just selected uh, selected a better GU-17, right? So I'll just put that out there. I'm not going to bother doing that because I don't actually care that much. The difference between 0.32 and 0.22 or something like that is not really a big difference for me. Um, also, have a look. We can see our noise floor. Our noise floor is absurdly low. I mean, it's almost 40 dB down, and one watt, we're at 80 dB, right? So, um, that's almost 120 dB of signal to noise at one watt. So, I'm just going to give myself an A plus uh, <laughs> for the power supply design on this one, because uh, that's like preamp level uh, quietness uh, coming out of, of this little guy. So I'm fairly proud of that at this point in time. I knew it was quiet. I have a big pair of EAW speakers in my uh, shop, and they are they're, they're have an efficiency of 120 plus uh, dB at one watt, right? And I used this amp to drive them, and it's whisper quiet. So I knew it was quiet, um, but it's sort of borderlining on the absurdly quiet here, which is great, you know, excellent. It means my power supply is doing the right thing as far as filtering goes. Uh, we can see our hum down here, down at 60. 
Now, 60, that's not power supply, because 60, uh, the power supply is full wave, right? So 60, it would be 120 if it was power supply. So we basically have no power supply contribution. I can tell you what that 60 hertz is. That is coupling between the power transformer and the output transformers and the power transformer and the input transformers. That is all that is. And there's not a lot to do about it. You sort of uh, position your uh, transformers in the, in the lowest coupling configuration, but you're always going to get a little bit of that. And honestly, that's still down at negative 20, right? So we're at 80. So versus 1 watt, that's still 100 dB of signal to noise, signal to hum. 100 dB. So I, I'm just going to just say that most mass, mass, mass market, um, sorry, I'm, apparently I can't talk. Most mass market tube amps are going to be in the uh, 75 to 80 dB signal to noise at 1 watt. Um, and that is good. You know, that's good. That's, that's below audible level. Um, because your your noise in your room is going to be something like 40 dB or something like that. So it's down, 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 down. But this is a, a really, really quiet amp. Anyway, so all that to say, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing here. But this is just a single power level at a single frequency. All right, next up is we're going to find out what our distortion is here at 5 watts. So 5 watts is right sort of in the middle of the range that this amplifier is good for, and you can see that our distortion spectrum is starting to sort of get a little bit interesting there. Um, still primarily second, but now we've got fifth here coming up with third. And so that is probably a little touch of uh, crossover sort of starting to creep in, crossover distortion, but it's not much obviously, but it's just enough um, that these higher orders are kind of coming in at that crossover point with the, because we're definitely in AB now. We're out of A. Um, but still, our distortion is pleasantly low. We're here at 0.52%. The second is 0.4 of that. The third is 0.18. And then the fifth is 0.25. Uh, so it's still primarily second. And it's still pretty low, 0.52. We're not above 1% yet. We're not only halfway there. So things are looking good. All right, so now we're set up to do sweeps. So this is our first sweep. We're going to start at 1 watt. And then we're going to do sweeps uh, at plus 1 dB all the way up until past clipping. And so um, that should be interesting. We're going to get to see sort of everything this amp has to offer is in terms of uh, frequency response um, and distortion through its entire power range. So this is like the complete picture. This is why this kind of software is so great. So let's just start with our first 1 watt sweep here. You can see uh, we're going to achieve... Yeah, just about, just about, it was, uh, it was like 2.78 or something like that. All right, so what do we, what do we end up here? So this is our, actually our frequency response we can look at here at one watt. And so this is a 2 dB range right here, 64 to 66. And so you can see that here at 1K, this is where we measured our, our one watt. And so up here by 20, we're off, looks like a dB. We're off a of dB at uh, 20k, and we're going to be off a of dB down here at, let's see, we're going to be off a of dB at 28 hertz. And so we're, we're, we're minus 1 dB at 20 and 20k, I mean 28 and 20k. Hey, that's pretty good. Not bad at all, really. That's, that's uh, I mean, it looks wonky here, but honestly, um, you know, having a, having a tube amplifier like this be off 1 dB um, throughout basically the entire uh, hearing audible range is quite nice. And let's look at the distortion here. Sorry, my, my scope is complaining at me. It's great. Um, so check it out. So now, this is 1 watt. So we'll just put 1 watt in here. 1 watt. So we'll remember what we did. And look, so the black line, that's the noise floor. See it? Uh, it's highlighted in yellow there. And you can see, here's our 60, that's our coupling. Um, there would be 120 in here. Maybe this is power supply, a uh, product of power supply, and the 60 up here at, uh, what is that, 182 or something like that. And so, um, but the rest of it is very, very quiet. And you can see that this agrees with our FFT in that at 1 watt, at 1K, we're showing a total harmonic distortion of 
0.331 in this case. We were measuring 0.33 earlier, but it's close enough. I don't have to split hairs on that. Primarily second, just like we already knew. And then third comes next. Yep. And the rest of them were down there in the weeds. So looking pretty good. So now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste your time. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with doing all these sweeps. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna do all these sweeps. And I don't know, maybe I'll do a time lapse or something, speed it up so you can see me doing all these sweeps. We're gonna sweep all the way up to clipping and then we'll be able to see how the amp does. All right, so we did good here. Um, as you can see, we've got our frequency response here. And so we've swept all the way from one watt up by one dB increments in the input, all the way up to nine watts. So nine watts is more than this amp can do. We decided it was something like a seven point something, 7.2 watt amplifier. And so we've gone above that. You can also see that it begins to compress the power because look at that nine watt uh, sweep there. It's hardly, it's not one dB away from the, uh, the 8.6 watt one, obviously, below it. Although the one below that seems like it's one watt, so it looks like it's fine up to maybe in the 8 watt range as far as um, not being in power compression, right? So um, you can see that the frequency response doesn't do any anything too weird there. So let's look at distortion. We'll start down here at one watt. And it's kind of hard to see here, so let's shrink this a little bit. All right, so, and then we'll put the noise floor down there and we'll watch this go up by one dB increments. All right, so <clears throat> one watt, we already looked at this. We've got a our distortion here. Our second is the uh, dominant one right there and it is at 0.314 and the total harmonic distortion is 0.315. So it's primarily second. All right, let's go on up. And you can see here at 1.2 watts, it come up a little bit, 0.339. Uh, 1.5 watts, we're up here at 0.367. And it just goes on and on like this. You can see how as we increase the power, distortion is slowly coming up. And as we know, we did a sweep at nearly 5 watts. And so this is almost 5 watts. And look, we're up here at 0.5. That's what we found earlier as well. So uh, we're in agreement with ourselves here. And up we go. Now things are starting to get a little bit distorty. Here we go. So this is sort of where we said the amplifier should be rated at. And we're at 0.665, and so we're probably just before visible clipping here. And uh, if we go up to 8.6 watts, now suddenly we've jumped. Look at all of our distortion here. So you can see that right here is where clipping, visible clipping is happening between these two. We've jumped from 0.6 up to 1.52% distortion. And so this is beyond what the amplifier should really be asked to deliver. And then up here at 9 watts, we're 2.75% uh, distortion, right? Which is not enormously high or anything. That's definitely audible. Um, it's not so bad. So, yep. And so you can see that um, now we can go through for any power that we want at any frequency we can see what the distortion is so if we want to look at distortion for instance down low at high power we could say near clipping down low um, you know we're uh, 2 2.52 percent distortion down here much more 4 percent distortion down there much more than through the mid-range here which we're still at 0.6 percent distortion and distortion is commendably low through the high range this is very well behaved up at transformers um, that's such a nice low frequency distortion right there. A lot of output transformers have a rising distortion characteristic there, which is not good. This has a little bit of saturation distortion. Some of that might be the input transformer. Some of that is going to be the output transformer. Uh, that's pretty typical for tube amps. You can see up here, we're really getting some, everything is getting terrible up here at 9 watts. So yeah, but everything is extremely well behaved down here at 1 watt. I mean, this is a uh, beautiful distortion spectrum, um, consistent throughout the frequency response. Most of your listening is going to happen down there at, at one watt, right? So I'll compile this all together and, um, 
and, and animate it so we can sort of see it go through its very power, various power levels so we can get a really good picture of what the amplifier is actually capable of. Um, in in uh, retrospect, this is a great little amp. I mean, I knew it was a great little amp, but um, you know, I really didn't know what I was going to find here. It's been a long time since I designed this for me, and uh, you know, it's it performs great. It's a great little you know eight watt or so amplifier. Um, distortion is good, and output impedance is you know medium, which I actually kind of prefer. Um, it's extremely quiet. Um, doesn't do anything wrong, really. I mean, it's got a good square wave. Um, it's just a good little amplifier. And, oh yeah, I forgot the last thing I was going to do. I'll, I'll pop the bottom off so you guys can see the inside of the amplifier. Alright, so for this part of the video, I'm just going to use my cell phone. My other camera is a little bit too big, but this one I can really sort of get it in there, right? So, um, as you can see, this is the inside of the amplifier. Here's the main PCB. My little input, input transformer is there. Got my coupling caps right there. That's my uh, little green ones are the, uh, the compensation on the feedback. And you can see here my little current sources there with my little pots I was telling you about. They allow me to adjust the operating point. Um, there's my, my power transformer, Toroidal. Toroidal is good in this situation because it has very little stray uh, magnetic field, so it doesn't uh, couple too strongly to the inputs, which is important. You don't want to hum, you can't get rid of there. Uh, this little guy is my bias transformer. Let's see, uh, earlier I forgot what voltage it was, but it looks like it's a uh, a 36 volt transformer there. So I'll just mount it on a PCB. And uh, actually, I'm just I've just got it on standoffs, but uh, you know you'd never actually want to do that um, unless you glue them down, which I've taken E6000, which is like industrial strength. Uh, glue and glue them down so that's not going anywhere, but you would never just put that on uh, little little standoffs or whatever or uh, little um, <clears throat> Little sticky pads like that like I've done probably should have just drilled the holes for that in retrospect But it looks like it's staying put for now um, You can see uh, down there. You can see that's where the uh, The wires are coming through from the output transformers And what else have we got here? Um Oh yeah, this guy right here. So this this is my DC heater supply. You can see I already had a DC. I, I've eliminated the uh, the smoothing and the DC rectification there because I actually included that on the power supply board over here. And so, but I've still got the uh, switching reg, and I've got the uh, got the inductor there, and I've got the linear reg after the switching reg to keep the uh, that's for the 6H8C driver tubes, right? Gives them nice clean DC, right? And let's see over here. Here's the thermistor. Little, uh, little um, easy start. Just put it right on the power receptacle there. You can see uh, this is um, 6.3 volt right there. I'm uh, combining the two windings from the transformer, and that's where the heaters are coming off of right there. Um, what do we got here? This is a power supply board. So everything in the previous video where we're talking about the power supply, you can see the zeners there for the um, the screen supply and all the smoothing capacitors and all that kind of stuff so that's basically it um, that's what's that's what's inside the amplifier all fits in there real nice kind of fun little chassis but putting it all in a box like this but um, anyway hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, look forward to the next thing that we'll test but uh, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, I will probably do this for a lot of my other designs too. I'm just going to roll through them over, you know, it might take me months or whatever to roll through them all. But it'd be fun to just sort of like put them on the bench, explain how they work, how I designed them, test them, and see if they actually perform like I think they do. Um, this is fun. This is exciting. I have lots of little designs that we could do this with. And uh, also, I want to help you build these things. So if you see one of these designs, of course, it's complaining at me again. If you see one of these designs and you're thinking, man, I'd like to build that, well, you know, reach out. Um, or just build it, you know, go ahead. If you have the skill level or whatever, go ahead and build it. Or if you have a couple questions or whatever that I didn't fully explain, um, reach out in a comment or on our Facebook page and uh, let's have a conversation. Um, I love this stuff and I would love to help you. All right.